Light can find the roots of disease and even help cure it. We'll show you some of the ways photonics is used for healing this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for June 3rd, 2015. I'm your host, James Lowe. This week, we bring you a special focus on light and medicine ahead of Photonics Media's digital conference on biophotonic imaging. The free online event will be held June 11th and features speakers from around the world on topics from photoacoustics to lens-free microscopy. Stay tuned for a sneak preview of the conference and visit photonics.com webinars to register. Later in the show, we'll learn about how light therapy is helping Gulf War veterans suffering from chronic fatigue, insomnia, and other symptoms. But first, we'll take a quick tour of four new biophotonic imaging techniques that could make a difference to your health. A computational imaging technique developed at the University of Illinois generates virtual dyes and stains without damaging tissue samples. It relies on Fourier transform infrared spectroscopic imaging to directly measure the chemical compositions of cells. A computer then translates the spectral information into chemical stain patterns. In this way, multiple stains can be applied while leaving the sample pristine for future tests. The research was published in the journal Technology. Next, a variation on the principle of optical tweezers could help researchers image the spread of infection from one cell to another. Normally with optical tweezers, any change in microscope focus affects both the imaging and trapping planes, making it impossible to trap even a single cell and determine its 3D morphology at the same time. The new technique, developed by a team of researchers at the University of California, Davis, as well as in Germany and Sweden, uses a spatial light modulator and a voltage-controlled feedback system to provide full control over the position and orientation of multiple trapped cells. Meanwhile, probe-based confocal laser endomicroscopy could offer a solution to one form of male infertility. Researchers at the University of Munich said the technique, which involves fluorescent staining, could help optimize the results of testicular sperm extraction by zeroing in on regions of greatest sperm concentration and minimizing the amount of tissue that needs to be removed. And finally, a technique based on optical coherence tomography can be used to measure skin irritation based on the density of blood vessels one to three millimeters below the surface. University of Washington researchers said this could be useful for evaluating diseases from psoriasis to asthma to rheumatoid arthritis, as well as treatment effects. All three methods were published in the Journal of Biophotonics. Still ahead, LEDs soothe Gulf War illness and a preview of Biophotonic Imaging for Medicine, a digital conference. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Dr. Laurie Gloucester. I'm CEO of Laser Quantum. So we've been manufacturing lasers now for over 20 years and we have over 15,000 products in the field. We began designing lasers for aerospace applications, fast jet programs, and the, as a result of this, the lasers are very robust and designed for high temperature excursion and high vibration signatures. To learn more about Laser Quantum or for additional information about our products, visit us online at laserquantum.com. Welcome back. We've been talking about how light can help find the causes of disease and guide medical procedures. Now, biophotonics editor Rod Pedrotti has this story about how light is being used to actively treat a serious and unexplained affliction. Following published results from a small study that applied LEDs to the head to improve cognition in persons with traumatic brain injury, researchers at the VA Boston Healthcare System are testing the effects that a unique LED light therapy has on brain functions in veterans suffering from Gulf War illness. Now, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs defines the condition as a cluster of medically unexplained chronic symptoms that can include memory problems, fatigue, headaches, insomnia, dizziness, and respiratory disorders. Starting to get underway, the trial aims to enroll 160 Gulf War veterans. Dr. Margaret Naser, who is a Boston VA research linguist and speech pathologist, as well as a research professor of neurology at Boston University School of Medicine, is the trial's lead investigator. Veterans in the study will, in addition to having red and near-infrared diodes placed within their nostrils, wear a helmet lined with LEDs that apply near-infrared light to the scalp. While speaking at the American Society for Laser Medicine and Surgery's 2013 annual conference, NASA reported successful results to significantly improve cognition, executive function, and verbal memory 
in chronic traumatic brain injury cases treated at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital, Boston. This study included a soldier who had suffered brain trauma caused by an IED while deployed in the Middle East. And he had been away from his unit um, since May of 2009. And then in the summer of 2012, we treated him in a research program we have ongoing here in Boston at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital at Harvard Medical School. And after six weeks of treatments, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for six weeks, with the LED cluster heads uh, placed on the head. It's only about 20 minute treatment. Um, he's been, uh, he returned to Washington DC for evaluation to return to his unit. And so that's that first time since 2009. And he's in special ops, so we don't really know. We probably won't hear from him, <laughs> so. The light from the diodes in the red and near infrared wavelengths has been shown to increase the production of ATP in damaged cells and diffuse nitric oxide outside the cells in that location which improves cell function and blood flow in that region. The intranasal red and near-infrared LEDs are placed in each nostril and are expected to deliver photons to deeper parts of the brain. The technology was co-invented by Dr. Lou Lim of the company Violite. Intranasal light therapy or intranasal photobiomodulation introduces the therapeutic effect of light into our body and our brain through our nasal channel it triggers the body to restore its natural balance or homeostasis. When we do that, we call upon the body's innate ability to heal. In the study, half the veterans will get the real LED therapy for 15 sessions, while the others will get a mock version, which uses sham lights. Then the groups will switch so that all volunteers will end up getting the real therapy, although they won't know at which point they received it. After each veteran's last real or sham treatment, he or she will undergo brain function tests. According to MRI scans, LED light therapy applied to the scalp increases blood flow to surface parts of the brain. It also appears to have an effect on damaged brain cells, specifically on mitochondria. The red and near-infrared light penetrate through the skull and into brain cells, subsequently spurring increased production of ATP by the mitochondria. According to Naser, that can mean improved cell function that could be associated with clearer and sharper thinking. Having recently reached out to Dr. Naser, she told me that the trial's first few Gulf War illness participants have just been enrolled. Thanks, Rod. Photonics Media's digital conference on bioimaging is June 11th. Registration is free, so we hope you'll join us for as many of the 11 scheduled talks as pique your interest. One of our featured speakers is Ling Ji Kong of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute's Junelia Research Campus, who will discuss wavefront engineering for deep tissue imaging in vivo. We got a sneak peek at the technique last week from Kong's colleague, Meng Sui. So with this uh, method, we can do uh, 3D imaging uh, at a high speed. So what I show here is the um, calcium imaging of uh, the visual cortex. Basically, we display different uh, gradient patterns to the eye of the uh, mouse. So, uh, after the mouse see those patterns, different sort of neuron with response at different time. After the measurement, we can do computation and label the neurons uh, by colors. Each color means response to a grating, you know, propagation to a certain direction. So, in this way, you can study a uh, visual cortex of the mouse brain. You can watch Meng Tsui's full presentation at photonics.com slash webinars. There you'll also find full details about next week's digital conference and an interview with keynote speaker Idowan Ozjan. The conference is free and open to everyone with access to a computer, so I hope you'll join us. And that's it for this week's Light Matters. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>